Good morning, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. Today, we're gonna continue work on these loafing sheds. If you didn't watch the last video, last, last week my wife and I bought two of these loafing sheds. Sometimes they're called the uh, run-in sheds or animal shelters. Basically, they're three-sided uh, with a roof on them, the front's open. We found a fantastic deal on these. Uh, we bought two of them. One of them we're going to turn into two horse stalls for my daughter's minis. Uh, these are 9 by 18 so each mini will have a 9 by 9 stall, which is more than sufficient for them. <clears throat> the one, I believe, is only 28 inches tall, so uh, they don't need a whole lot of room. The other one, or this one, I'm not sure which one we're going to do yet, we are going to finish out for half storage, uh, hay, grain, etc. like that. And then the other half is going to be a goat pen. And actually, I just got off the phone with my buddy who has the goats that we bought for kiddo for... Uh, Easter, three dwarf goats, and uh, when he called, he goes, you know what, uh, if you want the one mom, you can take her. So we might end up with four goats, have to clear that with the wife first, but I'm sure the kiddo would really appreciate that. We are going to finish these out with um, some oak lumber that my buddy Austin did on a sawmill. He does fantastic work. We've bought wood from him in the past. He's actually the same guy that milled the true dimensional oak 2x12s uh, for the top of the dump trailer. So good guy, I like to support local, and right now with lumber prices unreal, you just can't uh, go wrong with native Ohio rough cut uh, oak. I had him mill me down some boards, I believe 50 or 52 of them, I don't remember. I said, give me some one by oaks uh, just for their strength, but uh, we don't need to go overboard on them. And uh, one by tens, there's, they're kind of a variance. I told them they don't need to be perfect. Get me close to 1 by 10. I think a couple of the boards might be 1 by 8. Uh, but 1 by 10 by 10 foot long, we're going to go up 52 inches, which would be to the third uh, girt here from the bottom or the top one that you can see underneath the trusses there. Which uh, the long-term plan for these sheds is when we do build a big barn uh, in the near future, we can rip the fronts off of these. They'll already be lined, and then we can just real quickly change them into uh, loafing sheds for cattle and hogs. So like to get a few pigs, like to raise our own beef here. We have the room to do it, so that's what we're gonna do. I have a good buddy coming over today who's gonna help me do all this stuff. The problem with those oak boards is they're not dried. He just milled them up, like milled to order. They will shrink a little bit, which we're not worried about for being the inside of stalls, um, but they are heavy. My other buddy Justin and I uh, and our wives went to pick up the wood the other morning and big thank you to Justin and Kendra for helping me get that wood off the truck. As most of you, thanks Sammy, good morning to you too. As most of you guys know, I got a really bad uh, bummed right arm right now so I can't really do a lot of this work even though I would love to do it. But I'm going to try and help as much as I can. So he's supposed to be here in a little bit. We'll get that going and uh, we'll get you some shots of that. So stick around. Hopefully, Sammy, that's way too much. Hopefully by the end of the day, both of these sheds are at least skinned out and uh, dividers in and we are ready to go. The left side of this is going to be the goat pen. This is going to be where uh, we keep the three or four goats. Uh, 
in there buddy called me and said that they have another one they might throw into the deal but we skin the inside with one by ten oak uh, i think these are about 55 inches tall a lot of people go down to the first girt or i should say up to the first girt um, for the cost i know wood's extremely high right now but in case we ever use these for cattle or something else in the future i just wanted to have it done so this side is going to be for the goats and then we'll pan over here this side is going to be left unskinned this is going to be uh, a storage area and i'm probably going to call this part one because both of these stalls are going to be completely uh, covered on the front probably do dutch doors um, probably do a part two on that kind of a mini loafing shed to stable conversion i guess you could say but happy how this is turning out and uh, we'll go show you what the uh, the one we did for the miniature horses how that turned out real quick before we go over to uh, check out the one we skinned out for the minis I'll get some questions uh, from some family members on the gap below that bottom two by six right here we are going to right there we're going to backfill this with 411 limestone some call it screenings crusher run uh, varies depending on where you're at and what your local quarries call it so these will be uh, brought up to grade actually a little higher than grade for draining purposes and then uh, we'll have stall mats down and then bedding a choice we usually do sawdust in the summer and then when it gets real cold out we'll switch over to straw but uh that's the way it goes on that and that's like i said 52 or 55 inches tall so it shouldn't have any problem containing a couple small goats but then again i'm probably wrong on that they are some uh mischievous little critters all right so this is the shed that we skinned out for the miniature horses as you can see i still got to put a board right there there's one more here and uh for the middle section these minis have always been together, at least since we've had them. Uh, sometimes they get a little moody, let's just say. So I did put some 2x8s on the middle. It's hard to believe that a 2x8x10 by by is like $21 around me right now. It's just crazy. Um, like I said, we're going to bring these up to grade and backfill them with some limestone, uh, then stall mats, then bedding. So I'm probably going to go grab another 2x8 um, just to bring that up a little bit higher. Like I said... These two minis have always been together, but uh, they can get uh, on each other's nerves a little bit, and we don't want that. So let me, uh, the sun just changed, go figure. Uh, let me do a pan around the inside, and we'll show you those. They're finally staying out of my grass seeds, so we're getting along a little better than we, than we have been. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Sammy. Well, I must say I'm happy with the way these turned out. The oak looks fantastic and uh, extremely happy. Now, these aren't the 60 by 88 or the 40 by 60 pole barn we wish we had. Uh, hopefully that happens someday. But even if that does happen, these are going to be priceless. I can use these to put cattle and hogs in. Uh, I can keep goats in them. We could even move on to the end of the road and use it for a produce stand. Uh, some of my buddies said they'd make just great firewood sheds uh, for what we store and use for ourselves. I can probably get 10 cords uh, in these combined if I stack it all the way to the ceiling. Sorry about that sun. It keeps changing on me. But uh, I'm extremely happy with these. And like I said, the next part of this uh, in a week or so will be me skinning out the front of these. I've decided not to use metal on them. Metal just went up 14% on Monday. But the big thing is, I'll probably have trouble, like you can see, these barns do not match right now. Um, so I'm really leaning toward doing like a rough cut board and batten on the front with Dutch doors. So um, on this stall, I'm thinking the doors will be towards the middle uh, beam there. Or do them to the outside, it really doesn't matter. I just haven't framed it up yet in my mind. That's kind of how I work on things. But uh, we're going to do board and batten on these. I will treat it with linseed oil or uh, some Thompson's. I still got to do that research phase. I know a lot of old timers would just spray it with diesel fuel. That is definitely not the way we're going to go. Um, don't want that smell of diesel fuel, especially around something that has animals in it. But uh, I have to say, I'm pretty happy with the way these turned out. 
Uh, sometimes life throws you lemons and you know you got to make lemonade. So we are doing the best we can right now and these goats are coming next week so we have a lot of work to do. And then the other goal to have the mini horses here by the end of July. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work. We're not in any rush for that. Those are at my dad's. Um, he is gracious enough to let us keep them there and uh, he does the chores when we can't get over there which is most of the time with uh, schedules lately. But uh, the other big thing is we are just way behind the eight ball on weather. Uh, I wanted to have this horse pasture, it's a little over an acre. I wanted to have it planted last month. I wanted to have it uh, mid-April, they told me to try and get it in. We've had days where early this spring it was 80 degrees, and like I said, then we got snow. And then last three days it's been raining nonstop. It's supposed to be raining all day today, and now it's, uh, Temperatures climbing and getting sunny right before the sun goes down. But uh, hey, it's all you can do is do what you can do and try and work around the weather. And the important thing is every day we're taking baby steps, um, steps forward and not steps backward. So I appreciate watching this video. My name is Robert. This is Pheasant Lane Farm. We've got a lot of work to do. And my wife and I were just standing here talking about all the work we've accomplished in the last year, <clears throat> even with all the medical setbacks. Um, and uh, it's just fantastic. Every day I'm so thankful for the friends and family we have out that come out here and help us continue our dream moving forward. All right, guys, we'll check you later. Be safe, stay happy.